Uh, uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, my own personal word of welcome. Thank you for joining us uh, for the meeting uh, tonight, and greetings from Northern Ireland. Now, I, I want to uh, take a short reading from the Bible, please, uh, in the Gospel of John, John's Gospel, please, and uh, chapter 20. If you have a Bible, you can follow. If not, I read the verses. John chapter 20 and verse number 30. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written, that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. And maybe read the last verse of the next chapter, chapter 21, verse 25. And these are also, and there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written, every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Now, the Lord will bless to as we know the reading <coughs> of his word. Just... Uh, in the week that's passed, uh, a book has been published uh, in the UK. Uh, at the title of the book is They Finished Their Course. It charts the life story of a number of the Lord's servants, maybe 50 or so. And the life stories of those men is told in the book. It might get across your length and it's certainly worth reading. I was away all week in meetings and I come home on Friday night and my copy was waiting for me. And uh, over the weekend, uh, I thought, what about the story of my life? That book tells the story of a number of men who served the Lord in this country and even in your own country. But I thought, what about the story of my life? And I would like to speak to you tonight uh, about the story of your life. For the story is being written. The story of all our lives is being written. And, uh, I, you know, I, I just thought very simply about some of the chapters that might be written. I, I thought about a, a chapter of commencement. The first chapter in the book, the commencement of the story. Maybe a little detail about our birth, where we were born, our parents, when we were born, and so on, those details, the chapter of commencement. I, I will say this to you. As we think of the first chapter, remember that each one of us have been born in sin. Because of our links with Adam, the first man, every one of us have inherited a birth, a fallen nature. We've been born in sin. So a chapter of commencement. I thought there might be a chapter then about childhood. I reflect on my own childhood, the early days, starting school, uh, friends and companions when we were boys, a chapter of childhood. Then as things would go on, the story is being written, there might be a chapter about, uh, about career, high school, university, college, choosing a career, getting a job. That, that chapter would contain quite a bit. Then life continues. The story is still being written. There might be a chapter about courtship and marriage. And then children would come. Maybe a chapter about children and grandchildren. And before you know, the story is written. The book is coming to an end. And... It seems no time from the chapter of commencement until we come to the chapter, the closing chapter. And the book is written. And the story is told. The story of your life and my life. One of the things I was thinking about that story is, you know, the story will be written and it will go in very quickly. It was Job who said, what is your, Job said, man that is born of a woman is a few days 
and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow. And you know, my friend, just the time between the commencement of life and the close of life is very short. Life is short. What is your life, James? It's even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. And the story's written. I just picked some chapters that could be written. Commencement, childhood, career, and so on. There's one chapter that I haven't mentioned. A chapter that I feel is vitally important. And it's a chapter that I would say to you when the story of your life is written. Make sure that this chapter can be included. I've called it the chapter of conversion. You'll make sure, won't you, that when the story of your life is written, that there's a chapter that will tell about your conversion. I'm glad, I'm very glad that when my story is written, they'll be able to tell about a chapter of conversion. It happened when I was a boy of 15. I trusted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I have a chapter of convert. Have you? I'll just say this to you. As we think of the story of our lives, you know, when I was a boy and we got, we read different story books, and you come to the end of the story, uh, maybe at the last page, just at the bottom of the last page, it might have said, the end, the end, the story's written. But I will say another thing to you. Remember that the story of your life, as far as earth is concerned, yes, it will have a finish. But just remember that the story of your life will actually never end. There'll be no end because you will never, ever cease to be. You and I will exist forever. And yes, the story of Earth will end. Earth's story will end one day. But please remember, dear friend, that there's an eternity before us. There is another world, the world to come. The Lord Jesus spoke about the world to come. And what I want to say to you is this. In that world, there are just two destinies, heaven or hell. And this is what I want to say. If you have a chapter of conversion, when your story on earth is over, you'll be in heaven. But if the story ends and you don't have a chapter of conversion, I have to say to you that you will be in hell. And so the story of your life, the story of my life, think about it. And make sure I say that you have a story, a chapter of conversion. Well, I, 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 I want to tell you tonight that you can have a chapter of conversion. You can be saved. Whoever you are, thank you for listening, I say, but whoever you are, you can be saved. Because I want to tell you about another story. Not the story of Tom Armstrong, not the story of your life, but I want to spend the rest of the time telling you about the story of Jesus. It was a lady from your own country, Fanny Crosby, the blind hymn writer. She wrote a hymn and she called it, Tell Me the Story of Jesus. I want just uh, this evening to share with you the story of Jesus. She wrote, Tell Me the Story of Jesus. Write on my heart every word. Tell me the story, most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. And I, I want to tell you that story tonight. It's a, it's a wonderful story, the story of Jesus. The first thing I will say to you about it is this. It's a true story. It's a true story. Uh, just in the, 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 the introduction to the meeting, I noticed first uh, Timothy chapter one, verse 50. This is a faithful saying and worthy of your trust and 
The story's true. It's dependable. It's a reliable story. The story of Jesus, and it's true, and it's trustworthy. So there are many stories, and maybe you couldn't believe them all, but I can tell you, my dear friend, you can believe the story of Jesus because it's true. And so let me just share with you that story. As I thought about the meeting tonight, I thought, I've talked about the chapters in our own lives. What about the chapters? Some of the chapters that could be written in the story of Jesus. I'll, say, I'll, I'll say this to you. And that's why I read the last verse of chapter 21. If everything was written that could be written in the story of Jesus, John says even the world couldn't contain, couldn't contain the books. What a what a fool story it was. What a, what a life he lived, how much he crammed into his life. And so this evening, let me just share with you what I thought would be some of the chapters in this story. I thought, well, well, I'll say this to you. There won't be any chapter about the commencement of his life. Because the Lord Jesus, he, he, he never had a commencement. You see. The Jesus of whom I want to speak to you tonight. He's the eternal son of God. That's all I have to say to you. He never had a beginning. He is eternal. And so there won't be a chapter about commencement. I thought maybe the first chapter I could speak to you about was just a chapter of creation. That would that would hold many that would hold many pages, the chapter of creation. Because I want to tell you, as I relate to you, the story of Jesus. He's the creator of everything. To John, without him was not anything made that was made. He made everything. And he maintains everything. The story of creation. You'll read about it in Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And you read those verses that tell the days of creation, the six days when he made the worlds. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of his power. Says the psalmist, he spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. And he made everything. Without him was not anything made that was made. He's the origin of everything. And he's the orderer of everything. And by the way, he's the object of everything. The chapter of creation. You know, I, I just read it. I just was reading again today. And not Genesis chapter one. He made the greater light, made the sun. Just where we are here in Northern Ireland, it's a full moon. I just said to my wife when I was coming back home, look at the moon. It's a full moon. He made, he made the greater light and he made the lesser light, the moon. And says Genesis 1, and he made the stars also. Hmm? What a wonderful creation came from the hand of the Lord Jesus, the Son of God. It was beautiful. It was ordered. The chapter of creation. I thought about a chapter about his coming. That would that would hold many pages. Let me tell you in the story about the chapter of his coming. How he came from heaven to earth. How he came from eternity into time. Here's what the Bible says: Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. I'm so very glad of the chapter of his coming. How he came from the throne of his glory, the highest place in heaven was his. But he stooped down into our world. He entered it by way of a virgin's womb. Mary brought him forth. He was born in Bethlehem. 
She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and she laid him in a manger. What a story. You know, when he arrived, the heavenly messenger appeared to the shepherds on the hillsides and they announced his coming. As I do this evening, I want to tell you, friend, he has come. And the message from heaven was unto you. Behold, I bring you great tidings of good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Thank God he came. Here's what he said himself. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. On another occasion, he said, he said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more upon. Isn't it great that he came? Thank God for the chapter of his coming. Suppose we could write a chapter about his childhood, although we don't read much about that, but I want to bring you to another chapter. I've called it the chapter of his compassion. You know, can I tell you something? The story of Jesus is the greatest love story that has ever been written. It's the greatest love story that has ever been told. Because I want to tell that's actually why he came. We thought about his coming. Why did he come? He came. It was love. Look for you. And love for me. Love, we sometimes say, brought him down from the glory. Love brought him down from the sky. Love in his heart for sinners to suffer and bleed and die. And the Lord Jesus, he was motivated and marked by deep compassion. You know, there was one occasion when uh, he beheld a multitude. He, he, he saw them as sheep having no shepherd. You know what it says? He was moved with compassion. On another occasion, he stood at a grave of a man called Lazarus. He was touched. The tears flowed down the cheeks of the Lord Jesus. And the people said, behold, how he loved them. You know, it's not like being in a gospel meeting. I cannot see anyone. I know you can see me, but I want to tell you, whoever you are, the Lord Jesus loves you. Thank God for the chapter of his love, of his compassion. In deepest compassion, he came from the throne and went to the cross for our sins to atone. The chapter of compassion. I think that's chapter three in my story. Let me bring you to chapter four. In my story tonight, I have seven chapters, so I'm coming to the central chapter. It's the chapter of the cross. The cross is central to everything. For in the story of Jesus, let me tell you, the cross is everything. And so I bring you and tell you about the central chapter in the story. It's the chapter of the cross. It was Eric Sawyer who said, of all eternity, the cross is the center point. Of all loves, the cross is the highest point. Of all salvation, the cross is the starting point. Of all times, of all eternity, the cross is the dividing point. Let me tell you the story of the cross. You know, one day, they cast him out. They put a cross upon his shoulders. They carried it outside the city. And says, look, when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. And let me bring you to Calvary tonight in my message. As I relate to you the story of the cross, let me tell you. That there was a day when he was crucified. Just as the prophet had foretold. They pierced 
his hands and his feet. Just as he had foretold, he was lifted up upon a cross. And on that cross, he died. He suffered. I couldn't tell you how much he suffered. No one ever will, for there were depths to his sufferings that will never be fathomed. But as I relate to you the story of Jesus and tell you about the chapter of the cross, well, I cannot go into the detail because much of it is hidden from us. Yet I want to tell you this, my dear friend, that he was on that cross. He was on that cross for you. As someone wrote, when he was on the cross, I was on his heart, and so were you. On the cross, he suffered. And here's what Peter says. He suffered for sins. Not his own sins, for he didn't have any. He was sinless and holy and pure and spotless. But says Peter, he suffered for sins. The just, that's him. For the unjust, that's me. Is that you? The Bible says all of sin. And on the cross, he suffered for sins, for our sins. His precious blood was shed. His life was given up in sacrifice. And on the cross, the Lord, that's God, laid upon him the iniquity of us all. And he suffered for sins. And I told you that when I was a boy of 15, I trusted him. That night I discovered that he was on the cross for me. He was taking my place. He was bearing my judgment. And on the cross, he paid in full the penalty and the price of sin. And all I can say to you tonight is this. Thank God for the cross. I love this chapter. I love the cross. Because when he was on the cross, he was there for me. He died for me. Says the Bible, Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died for our sins. And I was speaking earlier today on Romans 5 and verse number 8 that says, But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners. Listen to this. Christ died for us. Thank God for the story of the cross, the chapter of the cross. Well, many people thought that's the story over. The book has been written. He's dead. Story's over. <laughs> no, 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 no. Thank God that's not the end. They thought it was. The people that crucified him said, that's it. He's gone. He's finished. But my dear friend, there are other chapters. Praise God. Let me tell you about what I've called the chapter of his conquest. You know, when he died, Two men took him down from the cross and they laid him in a sepulchre. They buried him. He really died. So they buried him. And they set, they rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulchre and they sealed the stone and soldiers kept guard. But let me bring you to that sepulchre early. On the first day of the week. And we discover that the great stone has been rolled away. We discover that the tomb is empty. What has happened? Christ has risen. God raised him. You see, when he completed the work on the cross, God was satisfied. The claims of his throne were fully met. And so on the third day, early in the Sunday morning, God raised them with mighty power. And I want to tell you, they thought that Calvary was a defeat. Calvary was the greatest victory ever fought and ever won. Every foe has been defeated. Death and sin and hell and Satan have all been conquered by the Lord Jesus. And he's risen. And he lives. What a victory. 
He has conquered. He has won the fight. And so the chapter of his conquest, I better, I see it's just about half past. Just give me a few minutes. I, I'll tell you about briefly about the chapter of his coming. You say, Tom, you've already told us about the chapter of his coming. Well, OK, the chapter of his coming again. You know, he's coming back again. Before he went back to heaven, he, he said, I will come again. And he's coming back. I'm glad of that. That chapter hasn't been written yet, but I, I would say this to you. That chapter could be written tonight. He is coming. He's coming soon. It may be that before even the day is over, he will come. Now, what as I speak to you about the chapter of his coming again, what I want to ask you, the challenge of the meeting tonight is this. Are you ready? For his coming, he's coming for his own. He's coming for those who have trusted him. He's coming for those who are sealed. Now, are you ready? If he comes tonight, will you rise to meet him? Or sadly, will you be left? What a tragedy that would be. The chapter of his coming again. Let me just conclude. Chapter seven. Let me tell you about the chapter of his coronation. You know, he's coming back to earth. He's coming, first of all, to the air to take all the saved people home, to raise the sleeping saints and to change the living. And together we'll meet the Lord in the air. But then he'll come uh, back to earth. This earth that is in such a sad state presently. You wonder, could things ever be put right? Well, I want to tell you, friends, that Jesus is coming back. He's coming back to reign in our world. Every enemy will be put down. And he'll come. And he'll come to Jerusalem, the place where he was rejected. He's going to reign. He's going to enter the city. And he's going to take his place on the throne. And he'll reign from the river to the ends of the earth. What a day that will be. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm going to share in that reign because we shall reign with him. The day of his coronation. King of kings and Lord of lords. What a day. And actually, I have to tell you, you know, I say when you come to some of the, the books that are written, you read the end. Well, the story of Jesus will never have an end because the Bible says of his kingdom, there shall be no end. And I'll just tell you this. I, I could keep you here a long time. David told me I could take five minutes if I wanted. But I'll just tell you this. Many stories when they're written, you read. And they lived happily ever after. Well, I'm glad I'm saved tonight. I have a chapter of conversion. And when the Lord Jesus begins to reign, we shall reign with him. All who are saved. And it will be forever. Let me conclude my message. Why did John, why did John write his gospel? Why have I told you tonight the story of Jesus? Well, I read to you there at the end of John's gospel. John says, these are written. These are written. That ye might believe. That Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Listen to this. And that believing, you might have life through his name. My dear friend, I have just told you a little of the story. But the thing is this. Will you believe it? These are written that you might believe. That you might believe in Jesus Christ. That you might trust him. These are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. Chapter 3 of John's Gospel says this, He that believeth on the Son hath 
everlasting life. And so I tell you the story. It is my earnest prayer that you might believe it. We sing a hymn in this country. It says there's a story ever new. It's wonderful and true. And the best thing you can do is believe it. It will calm your troubled breast. It will give you peace and rest. It's of all the news the best. Oh, believe it. Maybe someone will, before the day is out, say, I believe it. I believe it. And I trust that you will. It will bring peace and joy and life to your soul. And so I commend to you the story of Jesus. Thank you for listening. Thank you for allowing me to share with you this wonderful story. And may the Lord bless it.